It's a jolly good day for episode 19, Jesus' first miracle wedding in Cana. Come along now as Pastor Kenny, with a sprinkle of charm and a dash of delight, brews his splendid cup of coffee before our Bible study commences. What happens when Jesus goes to a wedding? Also, Philbert and Cecil wrote a song for some out-of-town visitors coming to Bible study. That sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. Come and see. Ten minutes later, Pastor Kenny drives to church. I'm cruising the Bible study, but guess what? My car is more packed than Baal's temple before Jehu cleared it out. <laughs> As I navigate, Mr. Stevo has one burning question for you. Mr. Stevo? My one burning question is, why does grilled cheese leave me feeling toasty? Oh, brother. I mean, what's the flavor of Pastor Kenny's coffee? Is it <coughs> Berry Blossom Bliss? <coughs> Vanilla Mint Breeze? <laughs> <coughs> Caramel milk macchiato. <laughs> or cranberry comfort. <clears throat> the correct answer is toasty cranberry comfort. I could use some comfort in this cramp car. Anyone got a cough drop that's not honey flavored? Ridiculous! I hate cranberry storms, and this is the third this week. Estos pronosticadores del tiempo, todos los días se equivocan. Se pavonean en la televisión como si fueran los reyes de las nubes, pero nunca predicen la lluvia de arándanos. After tidying up every last delicious cranberry, Pastor Kenny glides over to the pulpit with a comforting smile, ready to begin the Bible study. Welcome, class. I'm going to start our Bible study in a few minutes. But before we start, I want to introduce you to some visitors. Oh, oh, Pastor Kenny! What is it, Filbert? Guess what? I knew we were having guests today, so Cecil and I made a little song to welcome them. It's epic! <laughs> well, that might not end well, but I welcome your creativity. I just happened to bring my collectible mini piano. The one I won in the Meta Beast and the Revenge of Granny Local Tournament. I think I'm going to need some more cranberry cobbler comforts. I know you prefer your Steinway Fibonacci, but just play this one. Okay, we're all ears. Hit it, Cecil. Friend. So give me a hug, friend, and I'll let you meet my granny, my granny. Welcome here by those stairs, oh. friend. I'm here, my dear friend. Oh. I'll sit by your side, friend, and talk about yes. my granny, my oh. granny. Oh. That was something I'll never forget, Filbert. I promise you that. I even made a rap remix. Want to hear it? Oh, I'm sorry, but look at the time. We got to start Bible study. <laughs> I hope our guest enjoyed the song. Well, in today's lesson, Jesus will be a guest at a wedding. And just like that song, something bad will happen. Um, I don't remember anything bad happening in our song. <clears throat> Jesus will be a friend and help his Granny, his granny. <laughs> Just kidding. He will help his mom, Mary. So let's jump right into the story. Today's narrative can be found in the Bible in John chapter 2. Please take some time and read this passage for yourself. The events in this episode happened around the year 26 AD in Cana and Capernaum, which are both located in Galilee. Today's proverb is, lay your problems before Jesus, for he can help you. It's time for the narrative. Let's learn. Jesus, along with Simon Peter, Andrew, John, Philip, and Nathaniel, make it to the wedding in Cana of Galilee. Jesus' mom, Mary, is also there with Jesus' brothers and sisters. We know that Jesus has at least four brothers. They are James and Jude. Both of these guys would write a book in the New Testament. 
Joses, which is short for Joseph, he was named after his father, and Simon, which was a very popular name. Jesus also has at least two sisters, but the Bible does not tell us their names. They all were having a wonderful time celebrating the wedding. However, Mary brought some terrible news to Jesus. She whispers to him, they ran out of wine. This was really bad news. Why? Imagine if I were going to have a party and I tell you that I will give you all the food and drinks you want. However, at the party, I tell you that I ran out of food and you'll have to go find food somewhere else. What would you think of me? You would say, this guy is cheap and is not smart enough to plan for his own party. In the same way, the wedding host ran out of wine, which would make the bride and groom, the people getting married, look horrible. Jesus looks at his mother and says, woman, my hour has not yet come. So why should I do anything about the situation? Jesus is saying that this problem has nothing to do with his new ministry. However, Mary knows that her son can intercede for her and redeem the situation. She knows that Jesus is kind and she has faith in his goodness. So she walks over to the servants and says, do whatever Jesus says. Right then, Jesus walks over to the servants and Jesus' disciples follow him. Jesus looks at the servants and points at six stone jars and says, fill those jars with water. Those jars were used by the wedding guests to wash themselves. Kind of gross jars. Anyways, each jar was giant and could hold 20 or 30 gallons of water. Although this seems like an odd request, the servants listen, so they fill the stone jars with water. As they look at Jesus, he does not wave his hands or do anything fancy. He simply says, now fill up a cup and bring it to the Toastmaster. So the servants obey. As the Toastmaster drinks from the cup, he is amazed. He calls the groom over and says to him, everyone I know serves the good wine first. Then, after the people have drunk, they bring out the cheap wine. But you have saved the good wine until now. Little does the man know that Jesus, the God-man, turned water into wine. This was Jesus' first miracle in human flesh. He revealed his power and glory to his disciples, and they placed their faith in him. For only the Son of God and Messiah could do such a thing. After the party is over, Jesus leaves with his disciples, mother, brothers, and sisters. However, Jesus' brothers do not believe that he is the Messiah. They reject his identity. So Jesus only stays with his family for a few days, then he leaves them. He has much ministry to do and only a little time to do it. So he leaves with his disciples. So what can we learn from today's narrative? Well, today's proverb is, lay your problems before Jesus or he can help you. You see, Mary was a wise woman because she brought her problems to Jesus. Although Jesus is fully God, he did nothing in his own authority. He trusted in his father and he did whatever his father desired his Father's will. So, God the Father and God the Holy Spirit worked in perfect harmony with God the Son, Jesus, to turn the water into wine. Why? To display Jesus' identity as the Messiah and Son of God. The disciples saw this miracle and placed their faith in Jesus as Messiah. So let me ask you, do you bring your problems to Jesus? Since he is God's eternal son, he will talk to the Father on your behalf and the Father may grant your request. You are wise if you are like Mary and bring your problems to him. You are also wise if you are like the disciples who understood Jesus' identity and placed their faith in him. Don't be like Jesus' foolish brothers who rejected him. We'll learn more about that in the future. So take today's proverb, 
turn it into a question and ask yourself, do I lay my problems before Jesus because he can help me? So what happens next? Well, Jesus will make a whip, turn over tables, and make new enemies. <laughs> wow. You can read about it in John chapter 2 and watch it in the next episode. As the Bible study wraps up with a hearty amen, Mr. Nathan steps outside with a skip in his step as he dials the pizzeria with the precision of a maestro. Hey there, pizza guy. It's me, your best buddy. I have something I want to explain to you, good sir. Just because I named my pizzeria Dream It Pizza does not mean you should dream up crazy flavors. Creativity is a good thing, but not with pizza. Do you understand? Yes, that makes sense to me. I am so glad you understand. I will finally be able to get some sleep tonight, so what topping would you like on your pizza? Cranberry. <laughs> hmm, he must have hung up. He's a sensitive little fella. With a satisfied sigh, Pastor Kenny gently clicks off the church lights and drives home. As the night settles in around him, he smiles, content in knowing that like the crumbs left behind, today's lesson lingers in the hearts of the children, offering them warmth and comfort, like a cranberry. So, what did we learn today? Be like Mary and bring your problems to Jesus. When you pray, you're talking to God the Father. The Holy Spirit helps you when you pray, and Jesus the Son mediates for you. So, be like Mary and talk to Jesus about your problems. Also, Jesus' miracles point to his identity as the Messiah. Jesus is the chosen one who had come to save the world. He is the Lamb of God who came to remove the sin of the world. His miracles pointed to his true identity. And don't forget today's proverb, lay your problems before Jesus, for he can help you. See you next time. In the wilderness, John proclaimed, Christ is coming, the Lamb ordained. John's ministry points the way to Jesus, the light of day. Lamb of God and waters night, identified by God most high. Face temptation, but he won. Ministry has just begun. Behold the Lamb who takes away every sin. In spirit and truth, worship and point to him. Called him true, John and Simon Peter. Fill up the nuts and he'll take you. Did his first miracle in Cana. And he cleansed his father's house too Soon he cut him as he did preach Moved his ministry when John was impeached Changed a woman inside Christ's land Healed a sick son by his command Behold the Lamb who takes away every sin In spirit and truth Worship and point to him Somewhere in New Zealand, near Kaiawe's Kiwikiki's Bay Kiwi Kiosk. Hey, I'm kind of in a hurry. 
Uh, gotta catch a flight back home. All right, Chaz. That's all you're after, eh? Yep. Bummer, bro. By the way, I'm Mr. Apple Pie. You heard of me or not? Nah? Nope. It's all good, cuz. I wrote this choice book called The Apple in the Pie, all about how those juicy pineapples grow. Keen for a copy, eh? No, I'm good. All good. But hey, I've got a mean subscription deal. Can have one shipped to your wear every week, bro. Fancy a crack at it? No. Oh, that's a bit of a bummer, cuz. How about I pop over to your place for a yarn about pineapples? No way. You're a bit of a tough guy, aren't you? No wonder pineapples go all whack a when they see a fruit salad like you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, cuz how about I grab a knife, we chop it open, and have a munch right now. What's your problem, Mr. Apple Pine? Why are you so obsessed about this precious pineapple? All I want to do is buy it for my-